Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. <clears throat> In a video just yesterday, I shared that the first cryptocurrency exchange on the planet announced that it would allow the trading of a Flare's Spark token. And, uh, and this, is, this is rather substantial because there are, at the time I counted anyway, there are 79, 79 cryptocurrency exchanges that have already committed to, uh, to, to working with Flare to implement the airdrop for the Spark token. And they're not just fly-by-night exchanges. The, the, included in that 79, it's some of the biggest, most well-known, reputable exchanges on the planet, including the largest, which is Binance, uh, which is the largest cryptocurrency exchange when measured by volume. You've even got the likes of Coinbase and Bitstamp. And so I've been saying for a long time that uh, th these cryptocurrency exchanges, I think they'd be nutso if they didn't at some point jump on board and just allow the trading of these assets, which their customers already have, uh, on their platform. And so we have the first exchange ever, BitTrue. Um, they, they, they've come on board and said, yes, hey, uh, we are going to allow uh, our customers to actually trade this. You can actually buy and sell your Spark tokens, which is super duper cool to me because I'll tell you what, right now the Spark tokens are worth zero. They've not yet been distributed. And so to get anything more than zero sounds fantastic to me. And not that I'm going to sell all of mine at, at that, you know, right off the bat. I'm probably going to hold for some time because uh, I kind of play, I like playing the long-term game because that's not what most people do. But I, I just look at charts and I say, hey, the people that hold the longest historically, those are the people that have done the best. And I get it, not all cryptocurrencies are going to last forever, so you got to decide what you want to do. Uh, but I wanted to share this with you in light of all of this uh, from the Daily Hoddle. Imminent XRP utility fork will trigger tax bill, says crypto tax strategist uh, Sheehan Chandrasekhar. Nailed it. So uh, just be aware that I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. And also, as far as the tax stuff here, I just want to talk about it because it's an interesting topic. But I also do not have any sort of background with taxes, so uh, <laughs> absolutely nothing. Do not do not run with anything that I say having to do with taxes or finances, period. Just, just go speak to the professionals. But it's an interesting point of conversation, and so at least you can get your brain thinking about this. Here, it's, it includes in this piece from the Daily Hoddle, and then go talk to somebody uh, to, to get your get your ducks in a row here. But uh, anyway, a coming crypto airdrop will have tax ramifications for XRP investors in the U.S., according to the head of tax strategy at Cointracker. Flare Networks is preparing to airdrop Spark tokens to XRP investors at a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, the token is designed to be part of a new smart contract ecosystem that brings Ethereum-type functionality to the XRP ledger. Flare calls the airdrop a first-of-its-kind utility fork. And here's a quote. Flare's token, Spark, is created through what may be the first-ever utility fork, uh, whereby the origin network, in this case the XRP ledger, benefits through increased utility. Yeah, it, it probably is, to be frank. I, I haven't heard of anything else that is... <laughs> remotely in line with this every other time there's been a fork of any cryptocurrency it's been hostile you can think about the fork of uh, you know with bitcoin and bitcoin cash they had a, had a lot of people with strong opinions on both sides of the aisle of that one uh one was not forked to help the other but that's not the case here you even see ripple uh saying hey this is great this actually adds utility to the xrp or xrp ledger you're talking about the blazing fast speed of xrp mixed with the, you know it's natively low transaction costs you know fractions of a penny for every transaction and then add smart contract capability of that it's like uh some people are saying uh Ethereum? Are, are, do, do you see what's happening here? <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll see. Maybe they overcome their scaling issues. I don't know. But anyway, uh, Coin Trackers, she hand, she, she, I'm not even going to try it again. Uh, she says that uh, the airdrop comes with a tax bill based on an updated guidance from the Internal Revenue Service uh, released last year. And here's a quote. For example, say you received one Spark token on December 12th, 2020. On this day, it's worth $1. However, you don't get any control over the coin until January 1st, 2021. On this date, one Spark token is worth $3. January 1st is the day you gain dominion and control of the asset. Therefore, you would have to report $3 of ordinary income in 2021 taxes. If you were to sell this in February for $5, 
you would have a capital gain of two dollars which you get from the five dollar sale minus three which is uh, what it was when you like quote unquote took dominion i think they would they say dominion of it took control of it anyway and so in October of 2019, the IRS published its first crypto tax guidance in five years, addressing airdrops for the first time. And here's a quote. A taxpayer has gross income, ordinary in character, under, uh, is that, what's that little symbol mean? Is it section 61 maybe? I don't remember. Whatever, it looks like a couple of squiggly S's got tangled up together and then they're trying to break free. I'm not really sure what the hell that is. Anyway, but as a result of an airdrop of a new cryptocurrency following a hard fork and the taxpayer receives units of new cryptocurrency. So they wrap up by stating, Flair is set to take, take a so-called snapshot of eligible wallets on December 12th in order to distribute the new crypto asset. Exchanges that support the airdrop, such as Coinbase, are likely to give Spark tokens to their customers at a later date. All right, and then um, we have an unrelated story here, which was uh, just, just, this is just fascinating to me, and I'd hate to be one of these people. You can guess which one after we run through it. There's a piece from Cointelegraph titled, The Road Not Taken. Jealous brother claims twin earned $10 million in Bitcoin. It's crazy. And then they started this little quote up here. His wealth in Bitcoin alone is more than 100 times greater than my entire net worth, the dumb twin claims. <laughs> oh, man. This is a good story. Check this out. I think you guys are going to like this one. Many late adopters of Bitcoin often lament the fact they missed out on the chance to purchase coins when the price was under $1,000, $100, or even $1. However, one Redditor says his own situation is even worse as he's forced to compare his dumb decision to invest in silver against his twin brother's much wiser to decision, uh, wiser decision to, uh, to back Bitcoin. And look, I, I'll tell you this right now. Like all these people that say, oh my gosh, if I were there back then, yeah, I'd be just rolling in the riches. For the vast majority of humans, I know that's not true. The vast majority of humans emotionally buy and sell, and the moment some serious volatility was hit, they wouldn't have had the stomach to hold. They either would have sold at a loss, or the first time they eke out a small bit of profit, they would have been on their way. And uh, and then fine, they can look back eight years later and be like, huh, had I held that instead of making a few thousand dollars, it would have been millions. Fine, yeah, that, that, stuff, that stuff has happened. And he, the funny thing about this is I think that you're going to see those types of stories play out in the coming years as xrp becomes worth a fortune which again look i, I understand it could go to zero i get it I, like everything's a risk in life but i am mr xrp bull for a reason and if i lose everything because i made a bad decision investing in xrp that's my own damn fault but i could not be more confident for the long-term viability because you know what it's functionally being used businesses actually need it and even in the short term xrp is simply following the price action of bitcoin and so until there's a decoupling eh, whatever <laughs> But anyway, the story, which may be apocryphal, given the source is a throwaway account named The Dumb Twin, uh, claims the two brothers each received a $100,000 inheritance uh, in 2013, but took drastically different financial paths. Uh, and here's a quote. I've been a silver bug, and I argued that silver was, in my opinion, the best alternative investment to stocks and bonds. And that was a quote from the Redditor. And then here's another quote. He had just learned about Bitcoin and was adamant that the return could be exponential. I had vehemently argued against Bitcoin, saying that it was pure speculation and would be a total waste of money. Now, the dumb twin claimed that despite his protests, his brother invested roughly $50,000 in Bitcoin when the price was $100. The crypto asset stayed below $200 until late October 2013. Uh, meaning he may have purchased around 500 Bitcoin. With Bitcoin recently topping the 2017 former all-time high, the coins would be worth roughly $9.6 million today. Oh, freaking crazy. It's real, though. Look, I'm telling you guys, the reason this happens is because markets are illiquid. Like, this type of stuff is not done, and there are barely any humans or business entities on the planet involved in this, and... We that's what I'm saying. It's the smallest asset class by a long shot. So even if $20,000 Bitcoin sounds high or if XRP at the current price sounds high, whatever, dude, we ain't seen nothing yet. That's that's my firm opinion on this. Now, the twin claims his brother's investments are now valued at more than $10 million, while the $30,000 
uh, he chose to put into silver has dropped to $26,000 in value. In January 2013, silver was worth more than $30 per ounce, while today the precious metal is roughly $24 per ounce. And here's another quote. His wealth in Bitcoin alone is more than 100 times greater than my entire net worth. He had, <laughs> it's, it's freaking, it's just crazy here, man. But, um, well, uh, while the story cannot be independently verified, the concept of missed opportunities is one which Bitcoiners are familiar with, given the crypto asset is within striking distance of $20,000 for the first time in three years. Redditors were quick to offer their thoughts and advice. Pretty much every single day of your life, you miss out on an investment opportunity that could make you million, millions, said uh, somebody named Jack Grundy, G or Gundy, Jack Gundy. And there's another one. Never put all of your eggs in one basket, said Spatial Silver 88. You didn't have to choose between silver and crypto. You could have done both. Yeah, diversification makes sense to me. But, uh, man, <laughs> that's just... See, that's the thing, like... We're not going to see an opportunity like this ever again. Like this particular type of opportunity has never existed before in the history of mankind. It has not. And so here it is. And we're, we're here and we have the opportunity to take advantage of the situation should we choose to. And uh, if you have, I, I, I believe for people that have a long term mindset, holy, man, sky's the limit on this type of stuff because almost nobody's in it. it and, and for those cryptocurrencies, again, that have long term viability, it's uh, you're, what we have seen thus far is going to be dwarfed. A 500 or so billion dollar market cap for the entire asset class? No, no, no. Are there going to be coins with trillion, individual coins with trillion or multi-trillion dollar market caps? I think. And if I'm wrong, fine. Whatever. I'm just sharing with you my everyday Joe Schmo thoughts on this, but I could not be more confident. That's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.